The world famous Grand Canyon in Arizona, USA is taught as being formed over millions of years by the river running through it, yet the surrounding area is a vast peneplain many miles across and can only have been caused by a sheet flow of water. This photo from space shows that there is a large breach in the mountain range upriver, much larger than any opening required by the river. It is also fresh in appearance. A large fan, such as is caused by drainage exit, appears on the upstream side of the mountain range. A similar fan, some 400 kilometers across, exists at the exit of the Rift Valley to the Red Sea. Another feature having similar appearance and suggesting therefore similar age and cause. The obvious observation is that the mountain range dammed up and temporarily contained a large body of water until it overflowed, quickly removing a large section of the mountain range. The water produced the flat peneplain and the Grand Canyon is nothing more than a drain. These slot canyons are at 90 degrees to the main canyon wall, which means that originally the surface being drained was flat, not sloped. It is still flat today and therefore original. There has been no change and no tens or hundreds of millions of years. All over the world and on every continent we find canyons, peneplains and planation surfaces together. Whether limestone or sandstone, dry climate or wet, they are immediately recognisable as canyons. None are in an advanced stage of decay or hard to recognise. They are universal and similar in appearance, providing evidence of common cause and age. If the present day continents were raised up and the seabed sank down, it should be no surprise that as previously mentioned there are so many volcanoes on the seafloor, up to 100,000 of them. Many of these are what are called gyos. They are volcanoes with the top sheared off by water action. They are mostly at 1500 metres below sea level. This uniformity of depth is evidence of a singular event. Some however are at sea level and are now coral atolls, such as the Mortlock Islands, discovered by one of my ancestors, Captain James Mortlock, on a voyage from Australia to Britain in 1795. 350 metres below sea level, the Danakul Depression in Ethiopia has many gyos. Notice the uniform cut across the whole circumference, testimony to a short time scale. When a volcano erupts, molten rock called lava is ejected. The distinctive shape of this pillow lava is caused when the volcano and the lava flow is underwater. If everything was underwater and the land was raised up, we should expect to find pillow lava at inland locations such as here in the Peak District. Wherever you live in the world, you won't be far from one of these evidences of the Genesis Flood and having watched this video you should be able to start recognising them. These high resolution 3D topography images were obtained by the NASA Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. You can download them as a KML overlay on Google Earth. You don't have to live in Africa or Arizona. The Peak District and Cumbria in England has planation surfaces such as the one on the top right. Most of Wales is a former planation surface modified by ice. Note the large drainage surfaces to the north in Cheshire and to the south toward the Bristol Channel. In South Wales there are the Brecon Beacons and the South Wales Valleys. Mid Wales and Ceredigion viewed from the west. And Snowdon. The clue here is in the uniform maximum height of the mountains, evidence that they were once a single surface before most of the material was removed. The evidence for a global watery catastrophe found on the land surfaces is all very well, but does nothing to explain the position of the continents or explain why the seabed is made of volcanic basaltic rock, a completely different material from the sedimentary rock of the continents and therefore having a different origin. The earth is also ringed by large faults 
through which it is generally agreed that this basaltic rock has been extruded in some way, and as it has spread out, so it has produced the seafloor. One secular theory is plate tectonics. When the basalt meets a landmass, it then sinks down below the landmass and is eventually recycled. This is called a subduction zone. Subduction has never been observed, but it is inferred from the theory and from volcanic activity at provost sites. This idea has become academic orthodoxy since the 1960s. Further, that the Earth's surface is divided up into plates which, over hundreds of millions of years, move slowly about the Earth's surface, combining at different times to form different land masses. For instance, the theoretical continent of Pangaea is proposed this way, although to make it fit you have to reduce the size of Africa by 35% and lose Central America, Southern Mexico and the Caribbean Islands. There are other problems with plate tectonics, but the theory can be falsified without going to university. Transform faults are cracks which run for hundreds of miles at 90 degrees to the main fault. These have the effect of zippering the plates together and making it impossible for them to move laterally to one another, as is proposed by the theory. There is, however, an obvious fit in some parts of the world which cannot be ignored, such as either side of the Atlantic Ridge. The fit is even better when the line of the continental shelf is used, instead of the visible landmass. It also reveals that the fit of the continents to the Atlantic Ridge is slightly better than the fit of the continents to each other. It would therefore seem obvious that they have been moved apart and that the spreading basalt has done this, but here's another problem with long-age plate tectonics. If this process has taken hundreds of millions of years, why is the fit still so good? At today's rates of land surface erosion, the continents would disappear in an estimated 20 million years. Even if they did not, it is wishful thinking to suppose that a coastline would retain its original shape for hundreds of millions of years. Based upon this observation, the separation of the landmass along the line of the Atlantic Ridge has happened much more recently. But there is a problem for flood advocates as well. If the earth was completely covered by water, then the distribution of the flood sediment must have been equal across the globe. In other words, during the flood, if the entire globe was covered by water, then the entire planet had a continuous seabed covered in sediment thousands of metres thick. The present basalt seafloor could not have existed during the flood and must have been produced at the end of the flood when the waters subsided. There seems to be only one answer to this and the problems of plate tectonics. It's an old idea first proposed by Charles Darwin in 1835 and is being re-examined today. There is a kind of conspiracy of silence among certain scientists. They know but are not telling you that the upper tectonic plates of Earth also join in the Pacific. Not partially, they join totally. You are asked to believe that the continents swim or drift about willy-nilly, bumping and crashing as if they were on a grease skillet. This is not true. The simple truth is apparently too upsetting to too many apple carts. We're now going forward in time to show how the actual growth of the Earth took place. Imperfect as the details, but the overall is nailed. Antarctica, as you see, has become subtropical. Africa on a smaller globe move way downward under the globe, in fact. There are different ideas as to what could cause the planet to expand, reduced gravity and thermal expansion of the core being two of them. The idea may seem extraordinary, but the surface area of a sphere increases with the square of the diameter. In other words, a small increase in the diameter of the Earth produces a lot more surface area, and an expanding Earth does provide a solution to the problem of the position of the continents. I hope you enjoyed the video, and thanks for watching.